All right, I'm on top of the ambulance right now. And I just realized that I'm actually on private land. So I need to get out of here. This was day 15 since I left Colorado. I'd been on the trail for nearly 14 days at this point, and I had just stopped in Natcharita to fill up on supplies. But now it was time to get right back on the trail and head to Utah. And after a long day of running errands and doing chores, I just wanted to find a spot on the trail I could fall asleep. But sometimes finding that spot to fall asleep isn't always easy. Well, we are certainly not getting through that. <laughs> this trail's pretty tight, but it looks like we uh, looks like we should be able to turn around right here. And this is when I found the next pull off. After a long day, I really just wanted to find a spot and go to sleep. And finally, I found my spot to just lay down and relax, enjoy the campfire and a good dinner. But that didn't end up being the case. You see, most of this land out here is BLM land, Bureau of Land Management, meaning that you can pretty much camp anywhere. And there was just something that seemed to be off about this spot. There was a couple whiskey bottles that had been left on the ground, and the fire pit seemed nicer than most. So as the sun set, I decided to check Onyx off-road to see what land this was. I had assumed that it was BLM because pretty much everything out here was BLM. But when I looked at the maps, it didn't show any information. So right then and there, I decided to get to the bottom of it. I went ahead and paid for their $99 a year membership, and it showed me exactly who owned the land, and it was a land trust. This was unmarked private land. All right, I'm on top of the ambulance right now. And I just realized that I'm actually on private land. So I need to get out of here. Like, now. Okay, so we are gonna get going because this spot is actually private property. And we do not wanna be on private property.
Alrighty, and just like that, we are back on the trail. Wasn't really wanting to do this at night, but you know, it happens. There's some big washouts in this road where I have to really push to one side or the other. Why do I always do some of the toughest trails at night first? <laughs> I don't know how tough this will be, but I know it will be at some point. I don't think it will tonight. All right, we haven't hit the, uh, we haven't hit BLM land yet. This was the first turnoff that was BLM land. I just wanted to find camp and go to bed. I was exhausted at this point, but I really didn't know how overgrown and tough to follow this trail was gonna be. This is a little overgrown, for sure. Kind of getting into the weeds on this one, aren't we, Ruger? Another jackrabbit. This trail's easy, it's just overgrown. This thing just keeps going and going. Starting to get a little freaky, honestly. What is that down there? You can't tell here, but the reason why this was so nerve wracking is the trail actually went on top of a levee, like a damn levee. So on both sides, there was just a drop and it was about as wide as the ambulance. Well, it looks like we got a little ways to go. This is kind of a, Kind of a sketchy route, to be honest with you. But we're gonna do it. Okay, I need to check, make sure I'm clear from the back. Okay. Man, this trail has not been explored in a while. This is overgrown for sure. I'm having a hard time even keeping track of it. We're about halfway there. Well, it looks like we're getting pretty close.
I swear, if there's someone at the end of this part, <laughs> I guess it'd be kind of funny. Okay, it looks like I'm pretty much here. This is definitely one of the most kind of remote spots I've been to. This is pretty cool. I don't think I'll see anyone while I'm parked here. We're always doing more and more of this nighttime overlanding, huh? Right now we're on another massive cliff. All right, it's the morning. This is the trail we came in last night. So we got the highway right down there. And it goes off to Moab. What's kind of cool is it looks like we might actually be able to walk down to that river. You can see there's only a little drop off and then it's a walk down the shale. Might actually, we might actually be able to go take a dip in that water. Well, I'm about 1,500 miles away from that spot that I was at on a completely different adventure right now, and hopefully we'll be able to get caught up to that soon. But there's something that I really need to mention here, is that every day that I'm out on the road, I seem to learn something new. And the thing that I learned here was that understanding maps and where property lines are really matters. But I also learned something about private property, especially unmarked private property. Now, I'm not a lawyer here or anything, but I think I'm decently well read and I did some research into this topic after going through this experience. First of all, if the land is marked, if there's no trespassing signs, if there's a gate that you had to go through to be able to enter the property, then you're most likely going to be liable for criminal trespassing, which in most places is a misdemeanor. But if you camp on land that is marked as private property and no trespassing, then it can be up to a felony. Also, any damages you cause to the property, even tire tracks, you can be sued for, which really the suit for tire tracks would be a pretty minimal settlement, but you never know. The thing I find really interesting though is something called implied consent. An implied consent is pretty much when a landowner has made no effort to be able to close off his land, to gate it, to put no trespassing signs or anything like that up. In that case, you have something called implied consent in a lot of states. Now, like I said, I'm not a lawyer here, so look into this on your own in the states that you're at. And on that particular piece of property that I was camping on, there was no signage. There was nothing that said no trespassing. There was none of that. So the landowner could have come and he could have kicked me off his property. That's his right to do. However, the courts couldn't sit there and charge me with criminal trespassing. And I think that's a really important distinction to make here. It's really easy to stumble on private property. You know, there might not be a house on it or anything on it. People might just have bought land and it's under some trust. But here's my personal opinion on this. If you find yourself on private property, marked or unmarked, it's just best to get off there and find a new camp spot. You never know what's gonna happen and you know what people might do. Anyway, I need to get going here because I'm about to go pick up another ambulance and I gotta go take care of that. I'm super excited to go pick this up. There's a lot that I need to catch you guys up on. I've just been extremely busy. I've done about 6,000 miles in the last two weeks or so. So anyways, um, Guys, if you like what I'm doing here, if you like the videos, all that, please like, subscribe, share, all that. If you want to help support this channel, support what I'm doing here, there's Patreon. And I'm also giving away this ambulance, so make sure you check out the link in the description for that too. Catch you later.